Such sights to show you. Bring the motherfucking ruckus! Fuck you too! Yeah, turn around. You wanna, you, wanna, you, wanna run that, um, you wanna run that Christmas character that you specifically have been working on for this episode? Buy me one more time? You wanna run that by me? What are you talking about? You wanna you wanna run that Christmas, that very festive Christmas character that you were just talking about before we started recording? Oh my god. I forgot completely. <laughs> oh my god! No, 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 no! Let him, let him have it. He's gonna, he's gonna give us his Christmas character of, uh, of this holiday season. Look, don't even fuck with me. I'm angry. I'm pissed. All I want for Christmas is you, to suffer, to die, and just have no hope. No, you're still. Holding on! Let go! I'm sorry, Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> she grumbled at that I, shit. I, I, love that, I love that Christmas character. Uh, you literally, right before we started recording, said that that's not a Christmas character, that's your life character. Uh, I, I appreciate that. Um, but I appreciate it uh, for Christmas this season because it's pretty much how I feel about Christmas uh, cause it's no surprise, uh, for the eighth fucking episode that we've been doing Christmas stories. I fucking hate Christmas. <laughs> Wait, the last time I was on the show, was I, was I happy? Oh no. Uh, you died. Wow. My God. The last episode we recorded was, uh, Cabin in the Woods, oh. which, which was about 23 episodes ago. And, um... And you died because this fucker sunk yeah. an axe in your chest. Merry well, Christmas. no, I definitely, I feel like it transcended. You know? <laughs> I mean, a port of peace it's tea been, out for you. It's been, like, it has effectively been, like, a year since yeah. you've been on the show. But like, a, like, like I've, 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 I, I went to a celestial realm. Yeah. I did what I needed to do. Or didn't. Know, or didn't. Right. That's even better. Right. Maybe I didn't accomplish anything. Right. And now I'm back, and, and I'm I'm ready to like I'm yep. ready to get my ass smacked. <laughs> oh, Daisy! Daisy, <laughs> why are you all so concerned with the dog? Well, I oh. wish you could record her grumbles. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, we've tried with with Teddy before. Remember? Yeah, we've gotten one one little squeak out of him. Jesus, it sounds like. You're I've held him up next to the microphone and just like pressed on his abdomen. I shall not hold the dog up to the mic. Fucking bark, you fucking idiot. No, 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 not bark. <laughs> Teddy makes little piggy noises. He goes. Aww. And Daisy, she she moans and grumbles because she's an old lady. She's oh my god. Old, that's an old baby dog. Oh, oh, she loves she loves you. Oh, 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 she loves you. I love you so much. Just a few minutes of dog loving on this on this show. We're not into bestiality, but we are into loving dogs. I love you. Honestly. Physically. Honestly. Look at this dog. Why not? I ask. <laughs> Fuck it. I'm going to ask you a serious Stay away question. From my dog. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, to get over oh, her tail. Oh, what's <laughs> stopping <laughs> us as a society? I'm, I'm dead ass, man. Her what's stopping us as a society from claiming that uh, the love between a person and an animal is legitimate? I love you. I love you. It's I kind of you. like. It's kind. It's like. The next step f from being worse from fucking like a child or a baby, you mean because they don't have not, any they the don't have any before. like rights like or it's the step they don't before. understand you know like that's yeah. the problem with like <laughs> oh the kisses the actual problem with having sex with a child is that well, like is a anatomically a uh, also we biologically speaking of it all. it's just it's wrong on so many levels because their body isn't isn't meant for that right. So, right, right. 
I'm not quite sure you're really examining it, the, the whole thing. What are you doing with your life, Russell? Well, you see, an, an animal... <laughs> Yeah, Where have yeah. you been? Where have you uh, you're, been, You're going to keep it erupting, man. I'm not going to talk. You're not with Katy Perry anymore, are you? It's because she. It's because he fucked a dog. Well, I'm glad you bring her up because, speaking of animals and love, right? And Katy Perry between an animal and a man, it's consensual. If if I ever have been on the with sensual. an animal, if I ever have been with an animal, let's just say that Katy Perry is one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I've loved a dog. Yeah. <laughs> His name was Tom Hardy. Anyway, uh, this is uh, this she's is lots. Of, she's done. She's, she's done with this, like, this, this holiday season already. So, um, hey, hey, everyone, hey, it's uh, it's me, Captain Death, uh, on on your favorite program uh, that that shouldn't exist. This is lots of pasta. Uh, Christmas Christmas episode eight because we needed eight of these. And I'm um, here, of course, with the person you most expected, uh, Franz McBoohoo. <sighs> just fucking, just fucking say something. Just say, give me your Chris, give me your Christmas character. <laughs> you I already did I, it. I you already Russell did Brand. it. I'm, I'm waiting. <laughs> you call Russell Brand. I'm waiting for it. Oh, I don't know if I want to be the Jew anymore. All right. Well, they, there he goes. That was that was Franz McBoohoo, <laughs> who you all want were waiting for on this. Clip. Oh, you're such a mashugger now. Oh my fucking god. My name is Herschel Goldstein. I'm so happy I made an appearance on this Christmas episode. Although, let me ask you a question, Mr. De- where, 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 oh my where is our Hanukkah episode? Because I'm oh. about, I'm about a half of a gold gonna, penny away from suing you. Know what? You know what? You're right. You know, what you're, right. You you know what? you're right. Because I have nothing, so take it. Uh, <laughs> you know, for I next, take it gladly. For next Christmas, I'll, I'll, t- I'll tell you this right now, friends. I will write you. A Hanukkah creepy pasta. How about that? Oh my god, you such a How good boy with all of your mitzvahs. I really How appreciate it. Don't make promises it. you can't keep, love. I mean, if you go blind, you can't really fight. Can no, you? the the point is, I make them this promise now, and he's gonna forget by next year. Oh so right, love. What's all this then? <laughs> so anyway, I'm uh, Franz McBoohoo is here, and we also decided that because he did have a Christmas adjacent episode last year. Um, and because it's been a while since he's been on the show, that we drag Tenron Otrin out of his cave. Well, I'm glad you bring up a Jason, because when you look at and examine the relationship between two objects of body, you know, like my genitals and my Katie genitals Perry. Next to yours, <laughs> they insert, there's like this, this something, a relationship between the two genitals. Mm-hmm. Is that how you say it in British? Gen- gen- genitals. Genitals. Lick my genitals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, <wait>, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this this Christmas episode is is interesting, um, because for the first time I've had to, I've had to catalog what other stories we've read on these episodes because, for the life of me, I don't fucking remember, and they all have Christmas this, Santa Claus that. December this. I'm really fat. Trees and bullshit, you know, in the title. So I don't, I don't fucking know. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read off all the Christmas stories we've read on this show already. Uh, starting with, uh, in our first episode, we read a story literally called Christmas. Then we read twenty five, twenty six, the Good Gift. That was a good one. And he sees you when you're sleeping, which is a personal favorite of mine. Uh, on our second one, which is also within the first year, we did a Christmas Eve and Christmas episode in our first year. Uh, we wish you a Merry Christmas, The Ringer, uh, Up on the Housetop. Mm-hmm. That was a good one, too. And Red Christmas, uh, which comes back again in a, in a different way. Uh, the next year, we read Elf on a Shelf, My Christmas Tree is Killing Me, uh, another rendition of Red Christmas, The Best Christmas Ever, the Christmas spirit, a spy cam in my Christmas tree caught more than just Santa, and probably the best story we've ever read on a Christmas episode, Christmas Land, which is from the wonderful author who wrote um, The Porn Fields of Cog 7 and The Black Farm, um, which is uh, Feed the Pig, 
wonderful fucking author, Christmas Land, and, and Very Merry Pastas episode three. Go go to the very end of that episode. That is the best story we've read. Uh, on episodes four, five, and six, which was um, two Christmases ago, mm-hmm. we read uh, What Happens When You Write to Satan Instead of Santa, which was which was a fun three-parter series. Uh, that's the Very Merry Pastas four, five, and six. Uh, and then last year, you and I read... Uh, the Perfectly Behaved Boy, Better Watch Out, Better Not Cry, Elf on the 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 Elf on the Shelf, not to be, uh, not to be oh, that was mixed up with one. Elf on the Shelf. I liked that one. Yeah, like it kept showing up at to different, that kid's different house, places. Yeah. yeah, that was a fun one. Santa's Other Workshop and Santa Claus. Uh, I remember the one. I believe it's Better Watch Out, Better Not Cry, which is about the uh, animatronic. In the basement. And wasn't Santa's other workshop the one where it was, like, really almost, like, mythological? Where like Yeah, it was about, like, elves. Uh, yeah. It was about elves in the underrealm. Yes. Making cursed cursed presents. Uh, yeah, that was cursed, really cool. Cursed items, magic items. Um, they, were, they were describing how elves obtained their powers. I'm just eyeing this lineup for tonight, and yeah. I'm not looking too optimistic. <laughs> the lineup for tonight is really fun because we kind of go in order of how I feel about Christmas and the, li- <laughs> the literal feeling of Christmas, which is um, Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve night, Christmas Day, the Christmas miracle, a Christmas wish, and a Christmas warning to warn you for next year's Christmas. Can we call um, Christmas Day Christmas Gay? I'm I'm hoping that that's yours now. Okay. I, I already planned this episode out, so we'll have to see okay. when we get there. Um, if not, you better do a good job reading it. If it's mine, it'll be a Christmas straight, not Christmas. I appreciate that even more. Ah! <laughs> so now I hope it's mine. So, um, without without further ado, I want let's let's Aha! let's break it down. It's Can not you, you that? bitch. Can you hand me that? I hope you the bong. Yes, my bong. <laughs> so for this Christmas season, you know, it's been a while since we've done this, folks. Um, I want I want everyone to, you know, gather around your Yule log. You know, uh, it's in the middle of your room. Uh, it's not in a fireplace or anything. Set it on fire uh, and, you know, commit arson. Maybe even uh, set your room on fire. But as you're doing so, also, uh, you know, spark it up and, uh, you know, make your make your own Yule log <laughs> that goes <laughs> straight to your dome and uh, and spend spend your entire Christmas um, elevated so that you can uh, alienate your family and the people around you because um, nothing says Christmas and togetherness more than uh sobriety or uh you know if if you're jewish you can take your big old gold menorah and you can fill the holes with some big fat blunts light them all up at once and get a nice contact tie for the room get a nice That'd, yeah like, just create like a nice smoky atmosphere slip, uh, get some lung cancer slip some thc butter into your mom's christmas ham Oh, you know, really take really take that uh, that Christmas Eve dinner to another level, you know. And why not stop there? Let's put arsenic in the goddamn cookies. Now we're talking. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I want you to roast. Tenron is writing this down as we speak. (laughs) I want you to roast your chestnuts on your house's open fire uh, this Christmas season. And by that, I mean. Uh, open all of your presents before uh, Christmas so that you piss off your parents. Okay. Break tradition. <sighs> Rage against the machine! We're going to start this episode <laughs> with... Uh, I, want, I want, because he's new to this Christmas tradition that is going to start and end with this episode. Uh, Christmas Eve. I want you to take this one, Tenron. All right, whatever. I don't care. <laughs> this is Christmas Eve from Creepy Pasta. Christmas Eve. The Allen family are jovially celebrating and having a grand time. The Christmas spirit has never been stronger. There is absolutely nothing that could ruin this lovely evening. 
the Allen father excuses himself, saying that he's going to retrieve an unspecified item. He leaves the dining room and with his family awaiting his return. Unbeknownst to the children, the father would appear again, but wearing a Santa's costume, acting as a gift bringer for the family, bringing joy into their lives. Time passed, but Santa never came. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. With the unusual absence of the father, the evening soured, the children loudly wailed, Grandpa got angry, Grandma wept, and the mother's worries grew worse. The Allen father had never returned. He went out to get cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. What's the best Christmas present? Leaving your family. Yeah. Having, spending Christmas on your own. Oh, I don't want to live anymore. <laughs> Clarence, Clarence, I don't want to live anymore. Oh, <laughs> it's a wonderful life. Yeah. Turns <laughs> into a meaningful death. <laughs> The I hit my family, I hit my life. <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> Mr. Potter, take me out, Mr. Potter. I don't want all, those, all this money. <laughs> I've had a cadaver. <laughs> what seemed to be the greatest Christmas Eve of all turned out to be the most horrible of them all. A night to remember, or as some would say, a nightmare to remember. It's one of my favorite songs. Um, oh, okay. The Allen family moved on with their lives, but never getting over the frustrating disappearance of their dear father. Years passed by, the children grew up, grandma and grandpa, well, they died. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the mother remarried, and lastly, the house where the haunting Christmas Eve had taken place was sold. It didn't take long for another tragedy to befall the house. An unknown source caused the house to catch on fire. The house burned thoroughly, and nothing was left of it. Ironic. The little which remained of the house was the chimney that had toppled during the fire. Oh. Authorities investigated and discovered the answer to the mystery of the tragic Christmas Eve so many years ago. The skeleton of a Santa Claus. So that's that's uh, inspiration from uh, the, the harrowing tale yeah. uh, told during Gremlins. Mm. Of the of how the girl lost her father, uh, and why she hates Christmas is because he was an idiot and <laughs> tried climbing down a chimney, and got caught and suffocated and died. Would you go head first or feet first? You don't go down a fucking chimney. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> Can I, you not ruin my life? Is it? I always thought it was tits down, ass up. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Let's say that you can go down a tits chimney. down, ass up. Would you? Would a chimney wear pants like this? <laughs> <laughs> would it look like this? So um. No pants. That's a that's a fun you know it's a fun way to start the evening. It's a good Christmas Eve, uh, ruined for for everyone. What if he went so. down with no pants, but he had the Merry beard Christmas, and the it. jacket and the boots were on his hands? Yeah, you know what if? <laughs> it was just reach, like this. Here's a Christmas here's a Christmas treat for you. Reach into the couch in your back right. Like reach into the couch. Oh. What? Uh, pull that out for me. Uh, oh no. Pull that out for me. It's my weed. Oh, oh ta-da! <laughs> I was really excited. I thought you planted shit in the. Couch. I know. I thought there was like I a did. I thought there my was weed. like a, a gift waiting for me, but you know. I hide my weed there. To my surprise. So um. What's the point, Clarence? <laughs> <laughs> Just fucking kill me now. Um, I don't want. I, wanna, I don't want to live anymore. <laughs> I want frowns to take this next. I don't want to get married to anybody. I want frowns to take this next one. Um, what do you want, Mary? Huh? You want, to, you, want to, you want the moon? What if I hang myself on the moon, Mary? On the moon? <laughs> I'll wrangle it with a lasso and pull it down for you. That's illogical. Shut up your ass! <laughs> you can't do you can't do I mean that's an at least appropriate response. Like so that, um the moon up your ass. So frowns. Movie. Frowns, I want you to I take on this this next story. It's Christmas Eve <clears throat> night. Okay. From Creepypasta. Christmas. Such a lovely, heartwarming holiday to relax and enjoy with your family. Everyone has at least one fond memory from Christmas. And if you say you don't, well, you're just straight up lying to yourself. I am no exception to those with happy memories of the festive day. Drinking 
hot cocoa, relaxing by the fire, hanging up ornaments with my family, the usual things a child would enjoy during the holiday. However, there is one Christmas I would never forget, but not in a good way. The year was 20... <laughs> God damn it. You were doing so well. The year was 20. <laughs> the, year was, the, the year was 20 AD. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is dead. No. Jesus is dead, but he has arisen. He is a ghost haunting the town. As a reminder, Jesus is fake. The year was 2009. I was five years old, living in a farmhouse off in the rural Fairmont, Indiana. We usually spent Christmas at my grandmother's home, but this year we decided to do it in our own home. The setup was perfect. We had lights on the front of the house and the barn, festive tablecloths, and of course, the big, shining pine tree in the living room. Decorated with lights, ornaments, tinsel, the usual works. December went through quickly. Joyful occasions and activities were done with the family, and everything went through normally. Soon enough, it reached Christmas Eve. The young me bounced around with the relentless, unending energy in my pajamas around the home. Each time I went past the living room, I eyed the tree, and of course, the gifts that lined the floor under it just for me. Well, and my step-siblings, of course. But that didn't matter. This little routine continued for several minutes, until my mother told me it was time to go to bed, with some protest. I was eventually tucked under the covers and sent to sleep. I was sent to sleep. Put me down. <laughs> I was put down to sleep. Uh, I was put to sleep. I was Shut put down. to sleep. Don't, don't fucking give him any attention. Let him read. <laughs> I was eventually tucked under the covers and sent to sleep. My unlimited bounty of energy now seeming to have been depleted entirely. God damn you. God she's, in, damn. she's in darkness now. She will remain forever. I was eventually <laughs> fucked under the covers. I'm waiting. What are for you it. doing, Step I'm waiting bro? for the for the <laughs> for the dime to drop. It wasn't long before my eyes closed and I drifted off into the grasp of sleep, with hopes of Santa coming through the night of in my thoughts. Oh! <laughs> In my T H O T S. Oh! Good girl. <laughs> Pretty girl. I was awakened by a loud thud. <laughs> we did it at the same time. We the same person. My eyes gently fluttered open, still droopy, and my body groggy. Through my hazed and exhausted vision. I could just make out the figure of something in front of the front door, assuming the thud had been the slamming shut of it. It was tall and incredibly thin, looking almost sickly. I couldn't make out any facial expressions with it being so far away and me being so tired, but I could see that its face was particularly shrouded by a veil of thin, disheveled, <laughs> greasy gray hair. Oh, it's Russell Brand. <laughs> All right, look what's <laughs> over this then. That was missing clumps from the scalp area, as if it had forcefully torn itself out. Adorning its head, along with the hair, were two long, twisted horns, like some sort of billy goat. Oh, yeah, it's Krampus. <laughs> it was ad libbed. The Santa. Oh, <laughs> you're close. <laughs> the sight was enough to make my head spin. Was this Santa? That's what went through my mind as I looked around, hunched over like an animal searching for prey to pounce on. Eventually, it seemed to have locked its gaze on me. Its head turned. Popping sounds came from its neck like it were painfully cracking with each change of the angle. 
I hope that picked up because it hurt me. Yeah, that felt good. I, I, me... Oh, ow! My neck! <laughs> oh, oh my god! god. Oh, fuck. Look at his neck! Oh fuck, shit, ow. neck! I'm gonna sue you for everything you have! I have nothing. I'm hurt. <laughs> ow, my. Ah! Pussy oh, my crack, oh, dude! Oh, 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 oh no! His neck, his back, his pussy, and his crack. I neck. <laughs> my back, lick my pussy, and my crack. My crack. <laughs> so I started reading this like it was like a smutty porn. I don't you, know if you, I know I know you, know you, if you noticed I know, that. Yeah. It was like, I want to remind you, nothing sexy is about to happen. <laughs> so saith you. Great. My body immediately froze. A, a light grasp trying gasp. to leave my throat. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, a light gasp trying to leave my throat. But not a single sound came out. My sleepy eyes were now wide, locked into the hidden face of the thing as it tilted its head curiously. I couldn't see a mouth, but it just felt like it was giving me a malicious grin. Quickly, my hands threw the covers over myself, clutching them and holding them like a shield over myself, something any child would do for comfort in this situation believing that the blankets were valuable protection. Almost as soon as I did that, the rasping, harsh breath could be heard from the creature's direction. I began to hear light thumps against the creaky wooden floorboards of my room. <laughs> Footsteps approaching slowly, monotonously. Now, my room was very large. It was actually one of the two living rooms turned into a room for me while my parents took my older, smaller one and gave their room to one of my step-siblings just so all of us kids could have a room of their own. Step-siblings? What? <laughs> stop, no, no, stop, goddamn it. Step-bro? <laughs> Crap, this was his step-brother. Oh, thump, thump, thump. Thump, thump, thump. Even so, and with the slow pace of the footsteps, it seemed like it was getting closer rapidly. Thump, thump, thump. The footsteps were closer and closer and almost lined up with the sound of my heartbeat. My breath was shaky and quick as it approached before. Nothing. The footsteps stopped. Just beside my bed, I did my best to hold my terrified breath. I felt something thin and jagged touch the blanket at my feet. A finger. I believe it was. <laughs> yeah, you could think that. Though it could have been anything. <laughs> my penis. A penis. <laughs> Step bro. Step Krampus. Step Krampus. <laughs> Can you imagine? Step Krampus comes home from like college. Hey like... everyone. <laughs> you just joined varsity. <laughs> For what? I don't know. Rape? Damn. <laughs> Step bro, you look at fucking you look at fucking swall. What grade are you in right now? Um Fucking nine hundred and eighty-four. I'm I'm in ninth grade. Ah, oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> Is something wrong with you? Is <laughs> he takes you, this moment to take medication? I forgot to take it. You examined your head. Oh my god! I forgot to take me mojo pills. <sighs> yeah, whatever. Fuck you. Slowly, very slowly, it was dragged upward, passing my feet, running up my legs through the blanket. All right, it's definitely a penis. My body trembled, my face beginning to burn from how long I was holding my breath. It traveled at a painfully slow pace, trailing up the covers, feeling me through them until it stopped at my mouth. It. it pressed down rather hard in a spot on my temple. I let out a strained cry, ah, unable to hold it in anymore. 
The thing seemed to hesitate for a moment before I heard what I believed to be a gravelly, raspy chuckle. <laughs> Is it Ganon? <laughs> and it continued to press down. I swear that it ended up tearing through the blanket because I could feel the bony fingernail, fingernail. digging into my flesh. Uh-huh. It was as if the thing was testing me to see how much pain I could take. You're testing how much pain I can take. <laughs> you don't know what pain is! <laughs> You're right. Would you fuck me? Because I can feel no. the uh. boner. <laughs> I fuck me. <coughs> I sobbed softly to myself, trying to call out for my mother to come and protect me. But like all of my other futile attempts to produce words, nothing but air exited my mouth. Soon enough, the thing began to trail down my face again with its fingernail. However, this time, it was still pressing down forcefully. The nail left small, one-inch cut along my temple before the pressure was relieved and the finger was pulled away ent <laughs> entirely. Something that sounded like a painful gurgling rang throughout my room. <laughs> until my eyes were met with a shadow in front of me, seen through the thin blankets. It must have been the creature, getting face to face with me. My eyes were still wide in horror as it grew closer and closer until I could feel its hot, sour breath puff through the cheap fabric. ASL. Bet it smelled like Doritos and Mountain Dew. Step bro. <laughs> Step bro. And after that, the feeling was immediately gone. I heard the footsteps again, except this time they were moving away from the bed, back into the direction they had come from. Another gurgling sound filled my ears as it left, lingering in my thoughts. <laughs> Soon enough. Oh, it's just Harold Heavyhands. <laughs> it all makes sense now. <laughs> he just like broke into someone's house and he was like breathing on him. He was like, hey kid, you awake? <laughs> On oh, my finger. <laughs> right, yeah. Soon enough, I heard something moving away. I heard something moving its way up the stairs, opening a door and closing it before everything seemed to stop. After a minute of agonizing silence and the prayers that it was completely gone, I shakenly lowered my covers to reveal my cock. Right. To reveal nothing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't <laughs> I don't recall much of the rest of that night other than me cautiously going to the bathroom to clean up a bloody nose that had suddenly made itself known after I veiled myself from the covers veiled yourself? after I revealed oh. after I revealed myself from my covers so this kid just had, like, a fucking bad dream, right? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A Christmassy bad dream. I have a bad, I have a bad <laughs> dream, too. His name is Uncle Ben. Peter. <laughs> Peter. <laughs> Peter. <laughs> hey, Peter. <laughs> hey, Peter. New Spider-Man remake. <laughs> Uncle Ben is played by... He's played <laughs> Hey, Peter. You uh, know, let's, uh, with great power. I forget the rest. I think Uncle Ben should have killed himself. <laughs> yeah, I think he did. I think so. <laughs> that's the, that's he, the part he, where I'm like, he, he gave Peter a that's knife the, and then, like, took his hand and was like, Peter. Peter. <laughs> yeah. And then he just turned into rice. He just, like, evaporated. Just. All right. Um, at the time, I chalked it up. At the time, I chalked it up to the. You know, I'm sorry, that's so stupid. At the time, I chalked it up to the humidifier, which had the tendency to make my nose bleed rather frequently at night. It's very possible. The next morning, I opened presents slowly without a word. My mother had noticed the small nick on my head and concerned... <laughs> what? I was going to deep throat my bong, but I couldn't fit my mouth around it. 
<laughs> I don't have. He's been sexually licking his can of Perrier for the last. Don't, don't do it. I've seen him do it multiple. I don't need to see this. <laughs> <coughs> All right. Um, I've got a big mouth, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Help. No, yeah, no shit. <laughs> Help! I need to Help. don't. Help! I want to kill myself, Clarence. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, never get my wings. Oh, well, we're so close to the end. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, so many stories to read. <laughs> we all get one more story to read, by my, the way. <laughs> my mother had noticed the small nick on my head and concerned, questioned me as to what had happened. I lied, saying that I was tired and had tripped and fell against my bedpost. <laughs> Like, I'm a blackout drunk. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to frighten her with any mention of a thing that had been in my room. After that Christmas Eve night, I haven't seen any trace of that thing. No evidence that had it had even existed, though to this day I still ponder each Christmas season when I remember it at the corner of my mind just what exactly was that thing? A sick messed up person dressed up in a costume looking more terrifying because of my grogginess some sort of dare I say it demon pedophile I can't quite tell for sure but I do know one thing that was not Santa Claus yeah no shit I never saw <laughs> I never saw that thing again strangely my uncle also was taken away to jail not soon long after <laughs> Is there a correlation? So which, I don't know. You're still reading it in your author's voice, and, like, I want everyone to know that the story ended with that was not Santa Claus. Hey, we all have the uncle that says, hey, pull my finger. No, we don't. And I, I don't. Except, all of my uncles are nice people. Except this one was like, hey, I'm going to touch you with my finger, except it's my dick. Which creative writing college course did you pull this from? <laughs> uh, I actually wrote this. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm joking. Oh, step so, bro. Um, oh, I should be. I'm you sorry, should spoil be me, which bro. Which creative writing college course did you write this in? <laughs> Is there something you want to tell us? Have I been sexually assaulted? <laughs> boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy! I can't believe it's my last day in this old life. Claire, Clarence, kill me! I want you to fuck me, Clarence. <laughs> oh, Christmas time! My Christmas time is for masturbation. Christmas time. <laughs> oh. Ah. Yeah. No, you are reading two stories back to back. So let's so uh, let's get through this shit. I will take whatever time I need. To do a story. I hate you. I hate me too. So you're gonna you're gonna lead us right from Christmas Eve night into uh, Christmas Day, Browns. So you know what's funny? The fact no, that the fact I that don't I don't know I don't have any sense of humor. The fact that I switched up my character, my narrator voice to be like he was reading a Harlequin yeah. novel actually ended up being like correct. It was it was fairly accurate. Yeah, how funny is that? Because he that cramp has sure got personal. Oh yeah, he did with that bony finger. Can we take like a minute break to ask each other what we want for Christmas? Can we do that after this next story? Well, considering Ugh. that I already Fine. bought both of your I'm gifts, maybe halfway. You can okay. fuck off. Well, no, what we want for Christmas has nothing to do with what we got each other for Christmas. Well, no, because then I'll feel bad if it's not what you want. You know what? I don't give a fuck. Were we supposed to bring presents tonight? Christmas Day from Creepy Pop. Christmas Day. Oh, Christmas Gay. I am so fucking Christmas Gay. Oh, I didn't bring presents. <laughs> yeah, you fucking suck. Christmas Gay. Oh, from Christmas Gay. The doobie doo bo bee bo. All right, just, just give me a second. All right, let me let me let me get in the Christmas spirit. This one's even longer. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. I'm just getting in the Christmas Why spirit. Why are you mad at him? You picked him Ooh. for this. I know. Oh, I'm just getting in the Christmas spirit. Spirit. I'm mispronouncing spirit. Spirit. <laughs> are you saying you want me to be a Christmas pirate? <laughs> yes. Yes. Arr! Yes, Captain. Yes. <laughs> You'll kill me. I can't. 
I would be walking the poop deck if I tried that one. <laughs> Yo, ho, ho, ho. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Christmas gay. Oh, Christmas gay. I'm gonna read the story. Come smash my poon on Christmas. <laughs> oh my god. Stick a spoon in my poon on Christmas. <sighs> my snatch shot open. <laughs> 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 no, no wow. I can't read the first, I can't read the first sentence any other way now. <laughs> it reflexively tightened. <laughs> and it, it looked upwards to the door. The door. <laughs> 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 All right. My eyes shot open, reflectively tightened up and looked towards the door. It's 12:01 a.m. Christmas morning. And at any moment, the door to the bedroom will burst open and my two beautiful children will run in giggling with presents already in hand. Seconds passed. Nothing happened. It took a full minute before I remembered no one would be coming through the door this year. The kid's accident was only a couple of months ago. I wake up most mornings and for the briefest moment every day, I forget that they are gone. I find myself lying in bed, listening for their laughter or cries for breakfast to fill the house before the pain of losing them hits me as fresh as the day it happened. Merry Christmas, everyone. Um, I'm, I'm personally really ecstatic over the fact that they've died. <laughs> I mean, oh, obviously Christmas. Clarence wasn't doing his job this time. Merry the Christmas, kids were like, everyone. Everyone. They, it was a car accident that took them away. I was supposed to pick them up after school, but work ran late. I called my daughter Samantha, who was 13, three years older than her brother Ryan was, and told her they would have to walk home. It was only a couple of blocks, and they had done it plenty of times before. It wasn't a big deal, except that that day it would be. She was the only kid around the age, she was, the only, she was only a kid, around she was, she was only a snatch <laughs> but on this day it mattered because they smoked marijuana and the car came right out oh fuck <laughs> oh shit when you smoke marijuana I'm you, not even smoking a sativa man and you are you are making me bug right now <laughs> you, when you smoke marijuana you are 50% more likely to be hit by a car that will drive oh, into your home oh, and, shit, dude. and down into your oh, bank fuck, basement dude. you know why words are so important because I thought you said hip and, and if you smoke marijuana you have a 50% greater chance of being hip by a car <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm too what? hip for you, kids. What? Uh, there's a car on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. All right. This Christmas, I'm dead. <coughs> she was only a kid! Yeah. She was only a kid. <laughs> Can you finish the sentence? Are you, are you having trouble with the next? <coughs> Getting that wicked contact high, bro. No, you're not. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> Can you pass your dog in here? <laughs> Yo, where's Daisy? She was only a kid, around the age of 25, and did not not see them. <laughs> Girl, did I read it wrong again? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> did I read it wrong again? No, no, you, you haven't read anything wrong, per se. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've read everything according to what you think is right. This is this is always the case, and maybe it's the first time you've shared Wait. an episode. Maybe it's the first time you've shared an episode. I've been in two years. But just please, just let him have it. I out my heart. Just, just my heart. Him, just let him I just, have it. I just breathed out really hard. My fucking my heart. Yo, you got my nice tits, bro. My ventricles he help is me pushing us. He is pushing his ventricles into your field of vision. <laughs> I'm trying to realize how I read this wrong. <laughs> what? Here's a quiz. It's going to be a long Christmas. <laughs> what? <laughs>
What? <laughs> Shoot me straight. Okay, I'm going to ask but you a question, yeah. and you have to answer, oh, you have no. to answer correctly. Only, what was she? She was only a kid! Is it, isn't that what I said? Yeah. That's okay. the other part. She was only a kid. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Around the age of 25. Yeah. And did not see them crossing the street. <laughs> yeah, you read it right that time. <coughs> oh, okay. <laughs> she was only a kid. Why are you reading around it the age of twenty-five? Read the next she didn't see you the the next sentence. She was probably texting, eating, or doing one of the other hundred things people do while driving, other than pay attention. It did not matter. <laughs> it did not matter what she was doing. She hit both of them. And they did not. <laughs> they did not make it. I couldn't keep it. I couldn't keep a straight face during that. <laughs> They're dead, okay? <laughs> oh well, Ryan died right there on the road. Ryan died uh, while the ambulance tried to bring Samantha to the hospital in time to save her life. Clearly, one child was loved more than the other. <laughs> Fuck. <sighs> they were not fast enough. And in the span of 20 minutes, my life was destroyed. Janet, my wife at the time, blamed me. Of course she did. She's a woman. <laughs> Scratch that. I didn't know this woman. Oh, wait. We love we love women here. So, you know, just, just playing out a character. Um, so yeah, Janet, my bitch wife, <laughs> blamed me. And of course she did. It would not have happened if I had just picked them up as I was supposed to. She made it through the funeral and burials before leaving. And thinking back on it, I could not blame her. I can't stand the sight of myself either. That's why all the mirrors in this house are shattered. And why the gun I bought last week is already loaded and waiting by the nightstand by an empty bed. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Die! Pig! All of these thoughts rushed through my head as I dragged myself out of bed and put my head in my hands. It was the first Christmas I've had to spend alone. The house is dark and empty. Last year at this time, the kids were awake and already opening the one special present they picked out to start Christmas with. The tree would be lit. Same. I would be lit. Same. <laughs> I am lit. Casting a festive glow in the living room. You are glowing. I am radiant. The smell of hot cocoa and, and coffee and dankers <laughs> Ganjas. would be strong in the air. But it was the laughter and joy that would wake me up the most. As a parent, there is nothing better than seeing your kids excited and happy. And nothing does that more than opening presents on Christmas Day. I closed my eyes, tried to collect my thoughts, but a sound from the living room grabbed my attention. It sounded like the soft thud of little feet trying to be quiet as they snuck through the house. God damn you. <laughs> what they said fun yeah it didn't say shit your pants oh, I didn't have a choice I'm here for, for oh my life. god I'm supplying the goddamn sound effects here they all just come from me bum is that how you is that how you treat others who are from a different place than you are you just mimic them what are you doing it seems that accent that I have <laughs> imitation don't interrupt me I was I was letting the moment pause. Mm -hmm. You ever treat me the way you have again? <laughs> you and I are gonna have words. Uh, you and your missus, <laughs> you ain't gonna make it home together. I will promise you that. Am I the missus? <laughs> <laughs> oh, forgive me. I thought you were, I thought you were a lady. A sound I have not heard in months. <laughs> the sound I haven't heard in years. Shuffling off the bed. <laughs> is, uh... 
<laughs> yeah. Okay. Shuffling I, I, off of the bed, I made my way towards the sound. Thank you. Opening the door to the bedroom. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> All right, love, what's all this then? <laughs> oh, but cramp. This is where they would be sitting, right under the tree, presents in hand, waiting for a sign they could start ripping into their presents. But they're dead, okay? <laughs> they're dead, Clarence. <laughs> they're dead! I, them. <laughs> I don't want to live, Clarence! <laughs> Sanctuary! <laughs> It's a great Christmas movie. It was never gonna be that way again. <laughs> Not if I had anything to do about it. I fucking hate this. <laughs> Yo ho ho, Captain! Oh, this holiday of love and joy for everyone else will be a constant reminder of what I lost. <laughs> Made worse by the fact that all other families, neighbors, and even strangers are coming together. Coming. <laughs> together. You might give me feel my kidney stones <laughs> laughing so hard. Oh, love, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Made worse by the... F oh, sorry, they're already coming. Putting aside their differences and problems to have one special day together. And here I am, alone. The weight of the gun in my hand snaps me back to a cold, dark room that is my life now, reminding me that there's still a way out. I look towards the tree and imagine it like it was last year, blue and silver twine circling bright blue LCD lights, superhero and Disney character ornaments from the theme parks and rest stops the kids would always had to have decadent glass orbs that were a wedding gift from that bitch and the two angels looking back at me smiling and waiting for me to join them <laughs> I'm coming <laughs> I'm coming Clarence I'm coming <coughs> I, I thought as I felt the cold metal of the gun barrel against my temple, I pulled the trigger. They're dead, all right! <laughs> I love how Tenron's doing sexy, like, Snapchat photos over there. <laughs> he's doing, he's minding his own business. How about you, you keep the narrative? <laughs> are, are you like Belle Delphine right now? He you is. just need the tongue out. <laughs> You just sell me your bath water. <coughs> Sexy. I'd subscribe to that OnlyFans. The sound is louder than anything I ever experienced. And I heard it a fraction before the pain hit. So loud I could not see. The world went black as all of my senses faded. Until all I could experience... As all of my senses... The world went black. <laughs> the world went black as all of my senses faded until all I could experience was the roar between my ears. When the pain finally came, it was almost a relief. The sound did not stop, but my focus shifted from an earth-shattering rumbling to a drill-like sensation that started in my temple and started boring inward. <clears throat> the combination of the relaxed the combination of the sound and pain dropped me to my knees and the gun slipping from my hand. Reflectively, my hand shot up to the source of the pain and found nothing. Not a mark at the spot. Seconds ago, I shot a bullet. Daddy, can we open our presents now? A voice cut through the pain and I struggled to open my eyes to find the source. The dark, empty room I was in moments ago was transformed when my eyes finally pried open. The first thing I noticed was everything is bathed in a red flickering light. The glow coming from the black wall where the unopened Christmas tree box used to sit. Now in its place, a fully decorated tree. Instead of the blue and silver of years past, the tree was now dressed in red tinsel and lights 
that contained actual flickering flames that gave me the appearance of a tree being consumed by fire. Blood red ornaments seemed to drip the light throughout the tree and reflected the glow around the room. <clears throat> Sitting on the floor in front of me, presents in hand were my children. Their matching green Christmas pajamas, tinged in red from the glowing tree, making them look muddy and unclean. Their backs were to me, but from where I was standing, I could see something was not right. Ryan's arm was small, bent unnaturally at the elbow, giving it an insect-like appearance, and the hand that rested on his present was twitching uncontrollably. The fingers, tapping on the wrapping paper, of which the present at first seemed like he was merely trying to open it, but the more I watched, I could tell it was an involuntary spasm of pain. <coughs> the floor under Choke some... Choke on it, bitch. <coughs> Bad day! <laughs> the floor under Samantha's crossed legs was covered in blood. I could not tell if it was coming from her or the present on her lap. Maybe both. Her head turns towards me. When I could just about see her face, her head flopped back onto a clear, broken neck. Empty, jet black eyes looked directly at me. A thin, red trail of blood escaped her mouth, traveled upwards to her face, and started to pool in the right corner of her eye. Can we open our present now, Daddy? She asked again. Her voice deeper than I remembered, with none of the joy or light she had when she was alive. <clears throat> I had to get out of the house. The pain in my head was unbearable, and diluting my uh, hold on, I got it. Equilibrium. Equilibrium. Yes. Okay. Equilibrium. But I managed to stumble out the front door. Outside was almost pitch black and all the lights on the street and neighboring buildings were off. The only source of light was coming from a full blood moon casting an odd dark orange hue over something in sight. A loud, wet sounding thud. You gonna make thud noise? Um, thank you. <laughs> caught my attention down the road and I slowly make my way to the apartment building down the street. The pain comes in waves, pressure building up in my skull, blinding me. It got so bad I fell to my knees again. There was not anything around that could help. The street was empty. The businesses and houses along the road were all boarded up and looked abandoned. Nothing looked like it did yesterday. Once I was finally able to get moving, I saw a light on in the living room a couple houses down the street on down the down on right where I fell I saw a light on <laughs> take two can you stop I'm sorry make me feel self conscious I'm sorry okay I'm so sorry I'm blind some of the words are like blurring no no it was just the <laughs> I don't want to read anymore! <laughs> Once I was finally able to get moving, I saw a light on in the living room a couple of houses down on the right of where I fell. Garrison Keeler. <laughs> That's what you sound like, Captain. I walked toward the light and could see a figure standing at the window looking out towards the road in my direction. Wait... You're not actually reading it. Are you gonna let me finish without laughing at me? I was laughing at Why are you gonna laugh at me? The sentence, I wish I could read it. <coughs> it was a woman. Oh my god, it's his bitch wife. Hmm. It was a woman in a pale. It was a woman. <laughs> <laughs> it was a woman, pale, pale white skin, wearing a white wedding dress. As I got close, she raised her hand as if waving to me, and I saw marks on her arm. Her name was Whitey. <laughs> Isn't that a character from a black TV show? You no, know, Whitey's the uh, little little guy from Eight Crazy Nights. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, crazy! I never saw that movie. <laughs> Fuck you. 
There was a long four inch slit. Star uh, <laughs> fuck. I'm not even gonna laugh anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Starting from where her palm met her wrist down to her mid forearm. Blood slowly pumped out in thick r is that rivulets? Rivulets. Rivulets. Thick rivulets down her arm and onto her white dress, staining it instantly. The pain flared up again, and I stumbled in front of the window. She looked down at me almost understandingly before she turned and disappeared inside her house. We could not help each other, but just as she seemed to understand what I was now going through, I felt I understood her loss as well. It was this day, Christmas Day, for most, it was a reminder of what they had, but for us, it was too much of a reminder of what was lost. I collected myself for a moment before an another loud, wet thud <laughs> brought me back. Nice. I push on, and I wish I could do that. I push onward, trying to find a way out of this nightmare. The street's Christmas decorations were still up, but the lights were all dead. The usual joyful colors of forest green wreaths and red candy canes looked dull and corroded on the seemingly abandoned buildings. Ripped and haphazardly hung tinsel clung in patches to the dark street lights. Movement above me caught my attention. Hanging from the street light, almost hidden by moss colored tinsel, was a slightly overweight man. He appeared to have been dead for some time, his dark features made even more obscure by the pooling blood in his face and around the noose he hung by his neck from. His large, fat tongue stuck out between thick, swollen lips like a diseased, overgrown worm. He was dressed in a dirty Santa suit that seemed to have a lot of wear and not enough care on it, and I can smell the sweet and vile mixture of alcohol and vomit. Another wave of pain and pressure made me collapse into a ball directly under the man. The unkempt Santa's eyes shot open and he looked at me. He began to struggle against the rope holding him to the streetlight, his legs kicking, rocking himself violently back and forth while grunting for help. Just another sad soul claimed by this unholy night. Yeah, Merry Christmas. <coughs> They're dead, all right? All I could do was crawl forward. The pain kept me from getting to my feet. I could not help the man. I could not help my family. And I cannot help myself. I hear the thud. Again, this time right beside me. The sound was a wet smack of flesh hitting something solid. I rolled over on my side and tried to get a look at what was making the horrid sound and found myself staring into the bloodshot eyes of a man in a bloody and ripped up tailored suit. His body was smashed and broken. Blood leaked from his eyes and mouth into a dark, neatly trimmed, jet black goatee. He must have fell from a building to my left. Some kind of business office. I could not tell what company. And reading and moving my head too much caused the pain to intensify. As I looked into the man's eyes, his pupils began to shift. He seems to be trying to focus on me. His bones seemed to rearrange themselves in his face and jaw. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a daisy. His mouth twisting onto a surprised frown. He tries to raise himself up on his hands and knees, but the bones in his forearms were shattered and jagged cream-tinted shards were breaking through the skin. He shrieked in agony and collapsed back onto his stomach. I could hear a horrible grinding and tearing sound as his body shuddered. All I could do is watch in horror as the bones retreated into his skin and while screaming, he forced his way upright once again. I'm fine. Standing in front of me, I can see that his body is almost completely healed. It's Jesus. His left arm still hung lower off his shoulder, socked. He stood on an ankle that was bent sideways on an angle that could only mean the bone was still broken. 
but all the pain seemed to have left him. Instead, what replaced the agony on his face just moments before was a puzzled bewilderment, and as if I was not even there. And as if I was not even there, he searched the surrounding area as if he was looking for something he had just lost. He quickly found what he was looking for and straightened himself out. I can see he was now standing there, a worn and battered briefcase in his hand. He adjusted what was left of his bloodied Christmas tree tie and walked back into the building. I suspected he fell from. Walked back into the building I suspected he fell from. If you happened not to see the dark, spreading blotches of blood and the rip and tears in his suit, he would look like he was just any other corporate businessman going to work on Christmas morning. I feel a desperate need to get out of here, no matter what it would take. Ignoring the debilitating pain, I stood up and blindly started running, not caring about the direction I was heading. The only goal was to escape the awful things I had been witnessing. Nothing was going to slow me down, not the pain, not the nauseating roar in my head, not even the loud wet thud of a body hitting the pavement again behind me. I did not stop running until my legs could no longer carry me, and out of breath I stumbled into an abandoned house. The pain was too intense. I fought the urge to lie down and use my shoulder. I forced the door open to the house and trip into the living room. The living room of the house was dark, and the fake tree was still in its box, propped up against the wall, unopened. It was. It hurt too much not to get ready for Christmas without them, and it hurt too much to try. Looking at the empty living room, I could almost feel them there. Sitting legs crossed, looking towards our room, waiting to see that we were ready. They would each get to open their one present and then get whatever was in their stocking, mostly little dollar store trinkets and candy, but it was still exciting to them, even though they were getting too old for the cheap toys. It was never going to be that way again. I feel the weight of the gun in my hand. I imagine seeing the kids sitting by the tree. Imagine Christmas, how it is supposed to be. The best day of the year. The time when you're with family and loved ones and all the pain is gone. I want their smiling faces to be the last thing I think about. And I put the gun to my head with tears welling up in my eyes. I pull the trigger. The sound is louder than anything I've ever experienced. And it came before the pain. Suicide he's, is badass. So he's, he's stuck in a death he's, loop. Yeah, he's in a he's in a loop now. Christmas death loop. It's a that's a good time. Hell, hell for the uh, for the suicides, as uh, said so in Catholicism and Dante's Inferno. Forced to relive the way you killed yourself, my dude. So does that mean David Carradine is? Reliving, masturbating, constantly and coming then... and suffocating at the same time. That's that's like not a terrible way. It's a terrible way to go. You like know? you're just constantly feeling pleasure. Humorous, like, ah! humorous Dead. near the end of it. Sure, to to be certain. <coughs> oh, Merry Christmas, everyone! We've reached. That uh, was a really. We've like... reached halfway through the story or halfway through the episode. We're gonna take a uh, five second break here. To, uh, to discuss uh, what we want for Christmas the most. And I'll tell you right now, uh, what I want from Christmas the most is uh, meaning. Ten Ron. Um, I think I want uh, GameStop to announce that they're issuing an NFT dividend. NFT dividend over here. That's, that's Ten Ron. Uh, they, they wrote a Christmas song about that. Frowns. <laughs> Can I just get a guy to a PS5? Oh. No. I hate you. <laughs> I hate you. Uh, I'm enjoying so many games online. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> I'm, I'm having. I'm playing way too many games right now, which is why, when when I told people what I wanted for Christmas and it was just like a bunch of more games, I was like, I'm not even gonna have time to play these games that I'm asking everyone for. Regardless, 
Very excited. Help get proud to PS5. Subscribe to my OnlyFans. Nine ninety nine, folks. He's but jerking off on gingerbread cookies this month. Folks. Even more than that, just help me get a PS5. It's his own session of frosting. I I can't. I mean. Even with all the money, I still just can't buy one. So just help, help friends buy one, guys. $9.99. I'll come on everything. He'll come, on. he'll come in your Christmas stocking. I'll buy all the PS5 games that I can't play and come on them. <laughs> What's that on your Christmas tree? It's not just tinsel. It's, it's jizz. It's jizz from Frowns, which means it's frowny jizz. Daisy, Moving on. Daisy wants something for Christmas. What do you want, Daisy? She wants world. Peace. No, she doesn't. That's, uh, she wants. She wants fucking milk bones. Daisy <laughs> wants everybody's she food. She wants one thick milky bone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. Get away from that. All right. What's <laughs> all this then? <laughs> Moving forward, I can finally read a fucking story. The thickest, milkiest bones. A Christmas miracle. <laughs> Look at that face. From creepy pasta. <laughs> Give me your milky bone. <laughs> Her. <laughs> a fire faintly lit the room in a fluorescent glow, giving it a homely feeling. Are you fucking kidding me? Uh, oh, <laughs> Molly. Are you kidding me? Why the fuck? <coughs> the, warmth, the warmth spread to every corner of the house, and in the edge of the room to the right stood the Christmas tree. Its dazzling beauty brought awe to the man who stood in the center of the living room who had recently come down the chimney. He was a tall man, and fat at that. He was dressed in a heavy red jacket lined with white fur. His eyes sparkled as he witnessed the lights wrapped around the tree, reflecting off of the ornaments and hanging onto its green branches. The large man sniffed the air from the surrounding room. The smell of pine entered his nose, causing his lips to curve into a smile. He slowly slept over he slowly stepped over to the fireplace, the fire burning as bright as ever, and above it hung velvet stockings with silver lining laced into the fabric to spell the words Dad and Sarah. The man reached into his pocket and pulled out a brown bag. And with a swift motion, he pulled a single candy cane out of the bag and gently placed them into the stocking named Sarah with care. He glared at the stocking named Dad for a second before breaking his ice-cold stare away. With this, he moved into the kitchen. He entered the kitchen and trudged to the counter where a strange odor immediately struck the large man in the nose. The smell of a hard liquor was accompanied by a porcelain plate set upon the table in the center of the room. There sat a glass of milk beside the freshly baked cookies stacked on top of each other. Pleased, the man reached for the glass and gulped the milk down. He rubbed the mustache he had and recently acquired off of his face with his arm and allowed his gaze to return to the cookies. He oogled them for a few seconds, hunger in his eyes. Soon after, he grabbed one and placed it in his mouth, munching the small chunks between his teeth, which were as white as snow. The crumbs fell from his mouth and into his scraggly beard, as the jolly fellow continued on to the base of the stairwell. He reached his hands out to guide himself upwards until he stumbled upon the second level of the house. Paper cutouts of snowflakes hung in the low corridor. The moonlight seeped through the windows of the hall, which gave an eerie glow. The man took a step forward, which caused the floor to gently creak, halting his advance. His eyes darted around the house, not daring to move a muscle. Dust bunnies floated through the air, and silence became ever-present to the point where one can hear a single pin drop. The man held his breath and then gently released it, carefully taking another step forward. With each creak, he stopped in fear of exposure, however nobody seemed to hear the unannounced visitor. Before long, the man arrived at a wooden door near the end of the hall, and he saw that the door at the end of the room as well. 
It was where the child slept, but not soundly. The large man knew of her bruises and pain at the hands of the one she should have trusted the most. Santa knew all of the children, after all. <coughs> Turning his attention back to the door in front of him, he gripped the brass handle, its surface frozen. He twisted the knob and opened the door, leaving it ajar. A single figure in... A, a single... A single figure in was laying down in bed, their specific details concealed by the shadows of the room. The man walked to the side of the bed and lifted a picture that sat on the dresser. The photo contained a family, a man, a woman, and a small girl. The man smiled for a second before setting the frame down, and next to where the photo was originally positioned sat more bottles of liquor. Several bottles sat empty and several more filled to the brim and on the floor beside the bed was a long leather belt, bloodied on the metal area. Judging by the large frame of a figure under the cover, the man presumed they were the parents in the photograph, or at least one of them. A frown crawled onto the man's face as he uncovered the sheets to reveal the father from the photograph. Enraged, the man grabbed the pillow on the other side of the bed and brought it down on the father's face. The father's body instantly began to tremble as he clawed at the large man, desperately trying to remove the pillow. It was a fruitless effort, the pillow and the might of the man proving too powerful. The inhuman strength he possessed outmatched the father's strength tenfold. The father's arms dropped down to the side of the bed as his body went limp. He wouldn't hurt her again. The jolly fellow made sure of that. Once the deed was done, the man pulled the covers over the corpse and retreated to the window at the back of the room. The silky white snow gently fell to the ground in a peaceful manner. The night sky sparkled with the twinkling stars, and the man's eyes twinkled as well. He exited the room and took a deep sigh, unhappy he had to do such things. It was when he was about to turn around and leave, however, that he remembered the door at the very end of the hall, the girl's room. The man crept forth with silent footsteps, careful not to stir the girl from her slumber. Opening the door, he found himself in a slightly lit room thanks to a small nightlight plugged into the wall. Pink snowflakes emitted from the light danced about on the blue ceiling in a soothing pattern. In the very corner of the room was a small bed in the shape of a car. The man approached it. He gently lifted the covers to reveal the body underneath them, and there, comfortably resting in bed, was the little girl from the picture frame. He stooped down to the girl's level and watched her sleep. His teeth practically touched his ears as he leaned over and sniffed her delicate blonde hair. The girl grunted in her sleep, not seeming to notice the presence in the room. Scars and bruises covered her back and shoulders, and patches of her skin were scarred. The large man licked his thumb, covering it in moist saliva. He gently cooed as he rubbed the girl's cheek ever so slightly as to not awake her. And for several minutes, the man couldn't help but watch her until he eventually pressed his soft, moist lips against her forehead for a few seconds. He then gently spoke ever so gently into her ear, his voice raspy and queer. Have a Merry Christmas, little girl. May all of your wishes come true. Yes, queen! With that, the jolly fat man exited the room and snuck back to the living room where the tree stood still in all its glimmering glory. He had left a large red sack on the couch earlier and he went to retrieve it. He brought the bag to the tree and opened the sack, withdrawing presents, toys, and all sorts of candies. After proceeding to set several presents under the tree, the man exited the cozy home. Now, in the crisp winter air, he looked back upon the house. He smirked slightly, relishing the night. He had delivered the joy of Christmas to a little girl which needed it, and for that he was proud. He walked away, his large footprints covered soon, after the fresh snowflakes, which gently fell to the ground. The sun rose over the horizon, its bright orange glow cleansing the land of its darkness and revealing the shimmering snow spread across the plains. A little girl woke from her slumber and hopped out of bed. 
She let out a quick yawn before hustling to her parents' room. Her face was dull, and her energy lacked luster, as she reluctantly headed for her father's room and by his bed. She hesitantly poked at his body, her face a blank canvas. He didn't want... Uh, he didn't wake up. He hardly even showed any signs of motion at all. Again, she tried to wake him, but to no avail. She frowned a bit at this, but not for long. She wanted to go open what presents she got from Santa. She knew that he wouldn't want her to open the presents without him there to see her, but she also didn't feel like waiting for him to get up and drag himself to the tree with her either. Hanging her head low, she knew what choice she had to make, lest she is punished. She dragged herself away from the room, completely overcome with boredom. Wandering back to her room, she sat down on the edge of her bed and sat. Her eyes wandered to the floor of her room, where the smooth beige carpet had an imprint, an imprint of a foot, a large one at that. To the North Pole. Dear Santa, I hope you and the reindeer are doing okay. I know that you are busy with the other kids, so I won't ask for a lot. All I really want for Christmas is for my dad to be okay. It's been a while since mommy left, and daddy has not been the same. He yells a lot more now, and hurts me. I don't know why, but I just want it to stop. Please help my daddy, Santa. It's all I want. Love, Sarah. Santa came and put the fucking smack down on that boy. <laughs> well, Sam, Santa came and committed homicide. Well, first, well, first he was leering at those cookies in the kitchen. He, was like, he, he, he gobbled them up. Santa Claus is coming to town. Santa Claus is coming to town. Santa Claus is coming in your chimney. Santa Claus is coming so, um, in my me. chimney. This story is the longest one of the bunch, and I want Tenron to be the narrator. Mm. Uh, I'm going to be the horny little elf, and you're going to be the angry, ab abusive father. Hi, I'm Elfo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a Christmas wish from Creepypasta. Not to be confused with my popular Make-A-Wish parties, where I get my friends together to indulge me in my sick fantasy of... You dying? Last-minute pleasures. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought he was calling me retarded. Oh, I mean... No. Hmm. No. I <laughs> no, no. Absolutely not. I, I, but I, I wouldn't not call you retarded. I appreciate it, man. You're welcome. A Christmas all right, love, wish. what's all this then? A Christmas wish from Creepy <clears throat> Pasta. What kind of an abusive dad? As snow fluttered around outside. What the fuck? <laughs> I saw it happening from like a mile away. <laughs> As snow fluttered around outside of Timothy's clouded window, he anxiously used the sleeve of his blue sweater to wipe the glass clean. His small button nose then pressed against the glass, while his brown eyes darted around to take in the awe-inspiring scene before him. The snowflakes, each varying in size and speed of travel, shot around outside in the cold night air. His little heart pounded in excitement at the idea of running around outside to enjoy it. His mother hadn't returned home yet, and his father was still passed out on the couch from his unhealthy habits the night before. He reeked of alcohol, and sadly, Timothy was accustomed to such a vulgar stench. Under his sleeves were healing burns from his father's cigarettes. He had gotten... <laughs> God damn it. Oh, hell yeah, bruh. Fuck yeah. This kid <coughs> fucks. <laughs> this kid fucks. He had gotten upset at the young boy yesterday evening for not cleaning up after himself. Timothy had been playing happily in his room with the old train set his older brother once owned. The small train was going in simple circles around the black track. Timothy had been thinking to himself about how strongly he wished his life to be that simple. Nothing bothering him, no more, no more beatings from his parents, for crying out loud. 
nothing. No more hunger, no more sadness, no more crying, no more fear. He just wanted to be happy. <laughs> Seems like he uh, needs some uh, Wellbutrin. He's reading the story to Daisy. <laughs> Watching this train round the track put a smile on his small, chapped <laughs> lips. His brown eyes watched the toy with a carefree sense of contentment. It wasn't long. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that long. Mm. <laughs> that milky bone. Fuck. <laughs> Get out of here, days from. <laughs> it wasn't long before the peaceful silence was interrupted. He heard heavy footsteps rising up the stairs. His heart picked up its pace and his eyes widened in fear of what was to come. Fuck. It's hot. Me. Undoing his crossed legs, he moved to scoot away from the door, which stood close ahead of him. Subconsciously pushing himself back, his sock-clothed foot knocked over the small red locomotive. I tell you what, what these writers, what these authors will just write nowadays. <laughs> his sock-clothed foot. I mean, I that's descriptive. <laughs> it's descriptive, but it's a little weird. Have you ever used the word sock cloak to describe your feet? My, My dick. Sock maybe. clothed <laughs> cum rag. Yeah. Cummy sock. My socky. sock clothed cock. Mm. You know, Dr. Seuss. Rhyme a little like, bit. Like, if I was a mother telling my children, Kids, make your feet sock clothed. Yeah. Yeah, That okay. That makes sense. I used it in a sentence. It makes more sense now. <coughs> okay. What is it in now? Um, bullshit. <laughs> cock clothed. <laughs> cock clothed. Don't come clothed. back to your cocks are clothed. Sock on my cock. <laughs> Sock on my cock. I go on the cock. Nope. Okay, so Fuck while you. subconsciously putting himself back, his sock clothed foot knocked over the small red locomotive. Isn't it stupid? Say sock clothed Glock. <laughs> sock clothed cock. <laughs> It toppled over and off the track, its wheels moving against the air aimlessly. His eyes watched his story for a moment before the large door swung inward. His heart stopped. Oi, what's going? His father paused mid-sentence. What's his... these miss? Oh my fucking god. Let him finish fucking reading. His father paused oh, mid-sentence when his eyes... <laughs> I'm being abusive. I'm sorry. I got into character. I wish you were the son so you could get your ass whooped. <laughs> I might like it. You might. Oh, Fuck Father me. Harder. I'm going to come over there. <laughs> and that's it. I'm going to come some right of your lit cigarettes. <laughs> if you don't stop, I'm going to come. Where? That's Where, Papa? Threat. Where? That's a threat, not something for you to enjoy. But <laughs> This Christmas, watch this grown man come. Come on, boy. Come on. Oh, his father paused for mid-sentence when his eyes fell upon the toys on the floor. What's all these, miss? Timothy lowered his chin against his collarbone and bit back his fear. He couldn't bring himself to look into his father's eyes. That'd be creepy. But instead were glued on the fallen train. By now, his tiny bedroom was already fumigated with the smoke. I feel like reading this like Chris Hansen. By now, his tiny bedroom was already fumigated with the smoke from the grown man's cigarette which sat perched between his dry lips and decrepit teeth. Awesome me, damn it! His father shouted, which made Timothy recoil even farther. His heart was pounding and his breathing was ragged. His mind was screaming for his father to leave, for him to turn around and never return. Ignore me, eh? Oh, that's how it's gonna be! His father growled. Arr! There was a short moment of unsettling silence before the grown man began to take wide strides toward the young boy. Timothy didn't have time to scream before the older man gripped his bare arm and tore him up from his seated position. No, you're Timothy. I have a character later. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> no! Timothy cried out with his tears burning at his eyes. His sight was now blurry and shaken. Maybe this will teach you to listen! His father snapped before taking a drag from the white cigarette <laughs> stick and pressing the burning tip against the child's arm. 
Timothy screamed in agony as the deep, boiling heat was shoved against his flesh and held there. Tears stained his cheeks as his mouth hung wide open and his throat got fucked. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Timothy, what's all this then? His throat ran dry from his screams and cries. Stop it! Stop it! He sobbed. With uneven breathing and pain stitched into every word, he managed to gasp and force out. He jerked his cock back and forth. <laughs> I'm sorry. See, no, it's great. When frowns, yes, it's good. When, it's good. when frowns reads, the energy is there, and he stumbles over some sentences. This is just basically me stumbling over a sentence. So it doesn't say he jerked his cock back and forth. Rather, he jerked his arm back and forth to escape the searing pain. But every attempt failed and just resulted in in another burn in a new place. You don't yet, brat! His father yelled. Let me go! Stop! Please! 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 He begged as he let his legs go limp to fall to the ground. It was an attempt at evasion, but just resulted in him being held up by his father's painful grip on his forearm. His throat was scratchy and fully dry at this point. His arm was shooting jabs of sharp pain through his small body with every shaky breath he took. All Timothy had the strength to do was whine and Mm. pant for air. Fuck. (laughs) Chris Hansen has entered the chat. (laughs) Finally, his father released his arm and let him fall abruptly to the ground. Timothy's Timothy's burning arm lay helpless against the ground. Next to him as his chest shook up and down. The blood pounding in his ears couldn't even drown out the sound of his quiet cries. He knew that that if he was loud, he'd receive yet another punishment. (laughs) Through his blurring eyes, he saw the figure of his dad stumble to the door before exiting and heading down the thin, creaky hall. The young boy lay gasping on the floor with his entire body in shock. He had no intention of moving anytime soon. Instead, he lay still, waiting and waiting for the unholy pain in his right arm to cease. Looking out the window, Timothy shuddered at the memory. He hated his family. He missed his brother. His heart ached. He didn't know what it meant, but he always recognized the familiar emptiness and solidarity in his chest. He would take large breaths, but not even they could satisfy the gaping absence. Watching the snow fall, he smiled again. Something about how free they seemed and how calmly they fluttered towards the white ground made his heart feel a bit lighter for once. He wanted to be a snowflake. (laughs) (laughs) Oh... Flying freely against the night sky, surrounded by his other snowflake friends. No wonder Frown, his dad fucking. No wonder his dad fucking stabs him with cigarettes. <laughs> fucking snowflake. <coughs> fucking lip Todd. <laughs> I said Todd, so it wouldn't sound like a hard R. He didn't have any friends. <laughs> Snowflakes. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to go to school, but had never been. <laughs> he had never been beaten. <laughs> <laughs> every every morning he sat behind his window with his pillows squeezed in his arms as the bright yellow school bus rolled up the street. He'd watch the little boys and girls walk through the open doors and join the others. His brown eyes would view this every day until the bus disappeared down the road. Every morning and afternoon, he never missed it. Timothy wished he had neighbors to play with, but the, the houses on this on his street were so sparsely placed that the closest one was on the corner, which was a walk from his house, he hadn't been willing to attempt. Or who wasn't willing to attempt. So instead he watched, he viewed, he observed the things he wanted, thinking of any way he could retrieve them. All his ideas never finished. He knew nothing would work. He could barely leave his room to look for something, anything to eat without his father hurting him. Something bright caught Timothy's eye, a star. Up above the dead black trees under the dark sky and between the trees was perched a glowing star. A sight to behold on a night like this one. (coughs) He scrambled to his knees and moved to see it closer, but his breath fogged the glass. Staring up at the light, he flailed his arms against the glass to smear it clean. His breathing was quick, but this time out of excitement. Everything about the night excited Timothy. 
It was the one time he could let his guard down and not fear crossing paths with his horrid father. Looking at this star, he seemed to forget all this. He forgot about the scars on his body, the burns on his arm, the hair missing from above his left ear, the rips and stains on his clothes, and all the other things. All he was thinking about was that very star. And so he sat, perched before the thin, dirty glass with his neck cocked back so he could see right up to the spectacle. Five minutes passed, then ten, then twenty, then sixty-nine. Soon enough, it was midnight. Christmas. Timothy's mind was filled with happy thoughts as he viewed that star. His heart was warm with the wonders of the thing. Who writes these? His cock necked back. <laughs> he imagined having friends playing with their cocks, <laughs> riding on their cocks, eating, eating cocks, cocks <laughs> laughing, smiling, playing, playing cocks. cocks. You name it. Soon enough, it was cockless. <laughs> His heart was warm with the wonders of the thing. Who writes this? I'm pissed at that sentence. His heart was warm with the wonders of the thing. His heart was warm with the wonders of the thing. Warm with the say wonders that, of the wonders. Frowns, can you say that sentence out loud? His heart was warm with the wonders of the thing. I fucking hate that. <laughs> All right, his heart was warm <laughs> with the wonders of my thing. That makes much more sense if it's my thing. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. He imagined having friends playing in the park, riding the bus, eating lunch, laughing, smiling, playing with... Well, you name it. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I wish I could do all that. I wish I could be like the other kids. I think... I think it'd be fun. He whispered to himself. He shifted his kneeling legs, which bumped his right arm and caused him to wince from the pain of the burns. <laughs> this little, little weird. He paused and looked back at the star. The bright yet small one. He thought long and hard. <laughs> I wish I had a new father. As his heart sank and his arms ached, he moved back against his small flat mattress and lowered himself to find rest. His brown eyes were forced to shut as he lay curled up. His legs and arms were cold, but he couldn't complain. Not that anyone would listen. But little did he know someone was listening. Someone had heard him. Someone had heard his wishes. It was his father. <laughs> I'm gonna him, burn you. He's just like fucking Brad Pitt from Fight Club with a cigarette and the wife beater just <laughs> over in the corner. <laughs> a shadow passed through Timothy's room as he managed to fucking fall asleep. Hell on the bottom corner. I'm sorry, did you say something? I'm sorry. Oh, I, I just missed what you oh, said. I'm sorry, I, I wanted to laugh too. <laughs> I said, uh, I said Brad Pitt was in the other room, uh, fucking Helena Bottom Carter. The dad? Yeah. Yeah, okay. The dad is Brad Pitt from Fight Club, from Fight except Club. Cagney. Got you. He makes soap. He's from Liverpool. <laughs> That's the only difference. He He's sells from insurance. <laughs> and he dropped out of high school. He pisses in soup. So this is a spin-off story from that movie. Yeah. Yeah, this story is written by Chuck Palahniuk. <laughs> He's missing some of his teeth. <laughs> I mean... He's well, got... Tell Chuck that the story fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> a wondrous thing. Uh, the thing. A wonders at the, the thing. The thing. Oh, God, these stories. Let's talk about this shadow. A shadow passed through Timothy's room as he managed to fall asleep. Right. A single handprint pressed against the foggy glass of his window and proceeded to slide along the surface, clearing a way to see right in. The snow continued to fall and the stars kept shining. Nobody was at the window, but there was a presence in the room. A dark, shapeless form slipped along the walls under the light of the moon and stars. A shadow with no start. And so Timothy slept, cold and alone, on Christmas morning. In his dream, Timothy found himself standing in a green meadow. The sun was shining high in the sky and kissed his skin with a warm caress. Ah, mm. oh, God. Fucking... His... His hard. brown... I'm gonna shit. His, I've been a nut. My brown eye. His brown <laughs> eyes brown peered around him in wonder and excitement. 
<laughs> Giggling, he spotted a group of small brown rabbits. Rabbis? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you did say there'd be Jews in this story. <laughs> I was so sorry, I'm mixing the two. Please continue. <laughs> Brown rabbits <laughs> hopping calmly along the bright green grass. He hurried over to them with a big smile. <laughs> His fucking friends. <laughs> These fucking rabbits. What a loser. Dropping to his knees beside them, he laughed happily when they crawled over to him and hopped against his lap and arms. He giggled continuously at their soft and gentle touch. He's about to get raped by rabbits. <laughs> Running his small hands over the backs of the brown bunnies, they only seemed to like him more. Oh, he, they pawed at his legs and jumped against each other to receive his touch against their velvety fur coats. You like rabbits, huh? Someone asked. Startled, Timothy looked up. His arm paused midair near the animals. Sitting on a rock a few feet away from him was a young man with smooth brown hair and bright blue eyes. He wore a white shirt with red stripes, just like a candy cane would display. Some were thinner and closer to others, than some, which were thicker and more spaced out. He was also wearing a tight blue jeans and elf-like <laughs> shoes Fuck. from the movies. <laughs> what fucking movies are we talking about? <laughs> they were green with a little bell on the pointed toe, as well as white fluff by the ankle. A Christmas hat was also placed over his hair and hung to the side <laughs> with an extremely fluffy look to it. Are we... <laughs> hey, uh, kids, we getting fluffed tonight? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fluff, yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you like getting fluffed, huh? I love a oh, fluff me harder. I love getting fluffed. This is disgusting. All right, what's this all this then, Timothy? God damn it. All right, what's all fluff then? <laughs> no. no. His smile was kind, this mother fluffer. His <laughs> smile was kind and his demeanor was overall overall pleasing. In his arms lay a sleeping rabbit with black fur. Its ears rested against its back as he stroked it gently with his big, careful... <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. These, these fucking stories are allegories for fucking rape. That's what... And you know what? You know what? What I'm the here fuck for is it. Christmas all about? We're not even halfway through. <laughs> this is come a on, gigantic man. allegory for fucking... Come, come on, dude. We're not even there yet. Oh, oh, I'm bringing us straight to there. Its ears rested against its back as he stroked it gently with his... Somebody wrote this! <laughs> Somebody put these words in this part of the story <coughs> for this reason. His careful hands, both clothed with white gloves, come. Michael Jackson. God Each damn it. slender finger traced the same areas as he petted the small thing. What the fuck? This is softcore porn. Yes, this is legitimately like pornographic <laughs> and child talk. abuse. <laughs> he just described petting a rabbit with his big, careful hands. Yeah. yeah. Again, and he and. So they're trying to say that this kid's dressed weird. You know what happens when you masturbate? You trace the same area over and over again. Whoa. Quote, each slender finger traced the same areas as he petted the small thing. And in your case, this is biblical. petting the small thing. This, this, is, biblical. this is fucking biblical, dude. This is Sodom like, and Gomorrah. This is Old Testament. So what did, Tim, what did Timothy say next? Timothy, he said, well, he said, Bunny, Bunnies are really cute. Timothy spoke up shyly. Indeed they are, lad. What brings you here? The stranger asked with a rather grandiose voice and volume. I... I think I'm dreaming. He answered with a curt nod at his decision. Ah, I assumed as much. Welcome. My name is Dolian. Happy to meet you, Timothy. He exclaimed, petting the bunny faster the louder he got. <laughs> How... How do you know my name? Timothy asked. I know everything about you, my friend. I also know that some people in your life haven't been treating you so well. Is that right? His tone dropped to a more serious one, and Timothy lowered his head. Yeah. He mumbled. Well, no matter. Forget about it. Let's have some fun while you're here. I'm going to pronounce it the way I want to. I think his name is Do Lion. <laughs> Do Lion. Like he does lions? Yeah. Do, Do Lion suggested happily. Timothy wanted to join him, but all he could think about now was his father. He felt fear again. Loneliness, sadness, pain. Timothy, what's the matter? Do Lion asked. 
setting aside the bunny he was holding. He then stood with his tall legs and very skinny frame. He bent down beside Timothy and sat near him on the soft, luscious grass. I don't want to go home. The little boy responded with a small, hurt voice. You can stay as long as you'd like. I'll just be your older brother now. Do Lion announced happily. Timothy gasped, looking up at the stranger with wide, hopeful eyes. Absolutely! We can have all the fun here that you want. How does that sound? It sounds great! I had an older brother once! He's gone now! The younger boy trailed off and paused in <coughs> thought. What happened? Two lion asked carefully. I don't remember exactly what they said. Something like, Sue it! Sue it! Uh, no, that's not right. S Suicide? The older one asked quietly. Yeah, that's what it was. Do you know what that is? Uh, Timothy asked quickly. Uh, um, no, no, actually I don't. Timothy's shoulders drooped. Oh, okay. That's okay, I'll find them someday. Anyways, can we play now? The little boy asked. Dewlion perked up. Sure thing, buddy. We'll have lots of fun. Do you trust me, Timothy? The young boy paused for a moment, still smiling at the thought of making a friend. He took one last glance at his right arm and noticed there were no longer scars. His smile brightened. I trust you. And so the pair raced around the dream. They played a tag, they played hide and seek, they found more animals, they ate ice cream, they drew pictures, they sang songs. They raced each other, they danced, they did everything Timothy had always wanted to do. <coughs> After an eternity of having fun, the pair lay in the grass beneath a large green tree. Do Lion says, well, there's something I have to tell you. <laughs> I'm Chris Hansen with Daily News. <laughs> let's, do let's, Lion says that. <laughs> let's consult the chat logs. I uh, had the chat logs here. You told your father, I want to blank your blank. We I want to hang. pet your rabbit. <laughs> the bright blue sky was scattered with clouds that they were trying to identify the shapes of. That one looks like a teddy bear. His, his register drops because he's a little older now. Okay. <clears throat> that one looks like a teddy bear. Timothy exclaimed. <laughs> his balls dropped. Maybe. I see a rabid dog, though. Look at that one. It's an ice cream cone. No, I think it's a sword. After having a good laugh, Timothy uh -huh. took a big breath and huffed it out. His head tilted in the grass and he looked over at his new friend. Hey, do lion? He began. What's up, kiddo? How come nobody else is here? Do lion's happy expression seemed to falter for a split second. His wide smile quickly returned. We don't need anyone else, Timothy. If there were others, they would take all the fun away, wouldn't they? Sharing's no fun, is it? The older one explained. Timothy looked back up at the sky. I guess that's true. Suddenly, Dewlion shot upright. Timothy, I know what we can do. Let's fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play tag again. He suggested excitedly. <coughs> oh, we did that three times already. You, you always win. Maybe you will this time. You're older than me, Dewlion. You're much faster. Timothy giggled. I guess so. Ah. How about hide and seek? He perked up his cock again. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with us? Me really have disguised a cock. <laughs> we played that already too. You win every time. The younger boy exclaimed. Ah. The do line trailed off. Hey, D. <laughs> <laughs> it's Timothy asked. <coughs> yeah. What is it? The younger, but now a little slightly older boy went quiet. He started to think about before, about his father and his home life. D, I need to go home. If my dad knows I'm missing, he'll kill both of us. Dewlion looked at him quickly, a flash of dark clouding his eyes before sinking away like it was never there. Timothy blinked as though he was seeing things. You can't go back. They'll hurt you again. You'll die! He yelled in a deeper, scarier voice than ever before. The young boy shied back and went quiet. Dewlion noticed this and softened. Tim, 
Listen, I don't want you to get hurt. You're my only friend. My best friend. I know, but I can always come back, Timothy suggested. Dulyne was quiet. D? If you want to go back, I'll allow it. Only if it's what you really want, Dulyne said with a low voice. I'll come back tomorrow night, right after Christmas, the young boy said. Dulyne muttered something. The fuck you will. What'd you say? Timothy asked. Nothing. He responded darkly before the younger <coughs> boy noticed his eyes getting heavier. His vision got dark and darker and darker and darker, and the world around him seemed to melt into a dark, twisted place. All the colors melted to a demonic black, and the sky was clouded with red. Then he was asleep. Gasping awake, Timothy found himself back in the quiet of his room with the morning sun leaping through his window. <coughs> the emptiness in his heart returned, and the happy pumping of blood through his veins... <laughs> through his veins, was now back to normal. Mm -hmm. Oh! He mumbled, younger again, sitting up, stretching his small arms. A dream! He already forgotten most of the details of the dream. Something stuck with him, like the bunnies, the bright sun. The dew lion. He was heavily disappointed that his amazing dream turned out to be fake. Just like that. He wished it was real, but knew that it was too good to be true. <clears throat> Sliding out of bed, he went to find something to do, just like any other day. Waiting for his mother to, to return, waiting for his brother to come back, waiting for his father to disappear. He exited into the hallway and listened closely to hear what his father was, uh, to hear where his father was resting. Identifying snores coming from the room across his, he snuck past silently and hurried down the hall to find food before he could be caught. <coughs> Meanwhile, his closet door slowly began to creak open. Timothy was racing down the steps and was oblivious to anything else. The white door of chipping paint swung outwards on its hinges at an agonizingly slow pace. It was silent besides the low, ominous creak barely escaping the rusty hinges. Within the space was nothing but pitch-black darkness. No matter how hard you squinted, you could still not identify a single thing inside. That was until a slender arm snuck out from the darkness and grabbed hold of the doorknob with its skinny fingers. The sleeve was white with black stripes in the design of a candy cane. The hand was extremely pale and brandished nails like claws. <coughs> Next, a bright smile could be seen in the darkness of the shadows as a horrible, shrill laugh creaked out. It remained rather quiet, but filled the room with such an on -edge feeling it was simply inhumane. Timothy stood before the small molding fridge with his nose wrinkled at the rotten stench. The only contents of the space were various cans of different beers. He sighed and closed the door sadly like he did every morning, noon, and night. Turning around to search the cabinets, he nearly fainted at the sight before him. He was so used to holding back his screams that he prevented this one from slipping. <clears throat> Standing before him in the dim kitchen was Dulion, but twisted in ways he could never have imagined. His brown hair was now reaching his jaw and was a deep black color. His skin was ghostly pale and his nails looked like knives. His mouth was stretched in an unnaturally wide grin with stains on his teeth resembling blood. He was wearing everything the same as before, which was the only reason Timothy was able to recognize him. Dulyan grinned down at him from his remarkable height and opened his terrible mouth. Did you miss me? He hissed, his horrid voice sending shivers down the little boy's spine and tears into his eyes. <clears throat> You're not real! Timothy whimpered, squeezing his eyes shut as he assured himself he was safe. Oh, dear child. Dulyan laughed hoarsely. If there was a sound resembling death and horror, this was it. The little boy recoiled in, into himself and found himself instinctively stepping back until his small back bumped into the cold fridge. I am as real as you are. I am as real as everything in this no, house. No, 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 no! Timothy whined and sobbed like never before. <clears throat> his little heart 
could barely take this. And he wasn't even looking at the macabre spectacle before him. Oh, come on, Timmy. We're best friends, remember? He laughed again, his mocking tone hurting the boy even more. You're not real! You're not real! You're not real! Timothy repeated in his head. If I wasn't real, could I do this? The monster asked before reaching towards the little boy. Timothy peeked his eyes open just to have the stranger's razor-like claws reaching for his neck. No! Go away! He screamed, throwing his small arms forward to push the demonic creature away. I'll never leave you, Timmy! That's not what friends do! He then burst out laughing, the god-awful sound shaking the room. Oh, how goddamn pathetic! The child cried and cried, no longer afraid of who hurt him. He whined and sobbed, a sound that would pain anyone who heard it. <clears throat> would you shut up? The monster demanded and smacked the small boy across his small face. He cried louder. What the hell is going on? His father shouted from upstairs. You wanted a friend. You wished for me. You said the words, the only words I needed to hear to have complete power over your petty existence. You said you trusted me. That's what did this to you. By saying that, I was granted whatever pleased just to get back into existence. Oh, joy. Imagine all the fun I'm going to bring to the other children. Do Lion practically moaned at the idea, sexually. Mm. Get away! Timothy cried. As you wish, but only if we play one more game. Timothy's father raced down the stairs with a wooden bat in his right hand. Oi, you son of a... He turned the corner at the base of the steps and was met with the most horrific sight he had ever laid eyes on. A demonic creature stood in the doorway of the kitchen with a bloody arm in his hand, not attached to a body. The thing grinned at him like something straight from hell, its razor-sharp fangs dripping blood down its horribly pale face and staining its candy cane-like clothes. What the ever loving? He never finished his sentence. <laughs> the tall, skinny finger... Sorry, I'm still <laughs> thinking about cocks. The tall, skinny figure lunged at the father with an animal-like screech. The man cursed as he fell back and slammed to the ground with force like never before. Fuck him! <laughs> he raised his bat to try to hit the monster, but it noticed... Instead of removing the bat from his possession, he sunk its claws into the man's right shoulder and squeezed its hand into a fist. Mm -hmm. Timothy's father screamed out in, a pain as, in pain as blood seeped through his clothes. The monster <gasps> tore the limb from his body and watched in amusement as the red copper, smelling liquid, soaked the wooden floor and sprayed against the walls closest to them. This is exactly what you deserve, you disgusting excuse of a man! Oi! Go to hell! The father spat. You first. The creature grinned, his fangs dripping blood onto the man's face. The monster's head shot down suddenly and his jaw locked fully on the father's throat. Tearing completely through his neck, the thing ripped whatever it had caught from his body. It proceeded to eat the large section of flesh, bone, and muscle, and laughed horrendously as it did. The father lay sputtering it in his own vital fluids, with the entirety of his throat removed. No air was able to get to his lungs, nor anything else. He bled out from his body and his mouth. He coughed and gagged but was gaining, sorry, getting fainter and weaker. Jesus Christ. Next time, I'll just use rat poisoning. Dewlion scoffed before getting back to his feet. He towered over the room and took in a deep breath of the heavy copper around him before sighting, sighing in satisfaction. He grinned and looked back at the kitchen, noticing a large, dark puddle seeping along the floor. Poor Timmy. I guess you were right. He snickered maliciously. I do always win, hide, and seek. Wow. Cool. <laughs> wow. Cool, <laughs> says Tenron. <clears throat> All right, everyone. 
on to the last story. Uh, there are going to be voices for both of you. Okay. You are going to play Santa Claus. <sighs> okay, I'm ready. And you are going to play my older brother. Okay. Or younger brother, I forget. But you're my brother. Okay. This last one, I, I, I liked the sound of this one. It's a Christmas warning from Creepypasta. A warning for all you atheists out there. No, for all those who practice Christmas. Oh. It's the opposite. Wow. A warning for all you theists out there. There you go. Well, let me tell you I'm Jewish, so I don't believe in Santa. I don't hide the fact that I hate Christmas. Call me a proverbial Scrooge, insult me to no end, but every year I feel a dread greater than anyone who hates the holiday season could ever claim. If you know me personally, you'd assume it's because of my younger brother's disappearance and be right for the most part. It happened one Christmas morning when, by all rights, the two of us should have been sitting by our tree, opening presents and making treasured childhood memories. Instead, I was treated with a day of police frantically searching our house and neighborhood while questioning my distraught parents. They questioned me too, of course, but as a ten-year-old girl, I didn't have much to say. I told them that he and I had gone to bed excited for what the next day had in store for us, and that was the last I saw of him. He just never came down to open his gifts, and that's when my mother discovered his room was empty. But that was a lie. I do know what happened to Chris. I know who took him away, and I know that if I told the truth, no one would believe me, then or now. Santa kidnapped my brother. Did you kidnap me because I'm Jewish? Please don't laugh, I know how it sounds, and you're right. It sounds ridiculous. He can't be real, and even if he was, he's supposed to be nice to children. But I know what I saw, and it wasn't some lunatic in a Santa suit, either. The man was as real as winter wind that chills you down to the bone. I suppose I should start by telling you how it all started. Before the holiday was ruined for my family, that Christmas Eve, wa we all left out cookies for Santa, talked about what we hoped he would bring, and then our parents read the night before Christmas to my brother and I, all of them cheerful, mundane traditions for our family. What was different that final year, I was n noticeably less enthusiastic about the whole process. It was the first year I had openly stopped believing in Santa Claus. I was a strange and cynical child, much to the concern of my parents. To tell you the truth, until that fateful night, I had never really be been a believer in Santa Claus. I mostly just played along to please adults, but that year I was tired of all the acting. That's one of the many ways we differed so much, my brother and I. You see, Chris was a young, energetic, and curious boy. I remember the year he was taken was also the one where... He had found where our parents were hiding our unwrapped gifts weeks ahead of time. He refused to tell his own big sister what she was going to be getting, though. Figures, I guess. More importantly, however, being three years younger than me, he was still very much a believer. My flat denials of the existence of Santa Claus only served as a challenge to him, and he was determined to prove otherwise. We were heading up, to stair up the stairs to bed when he got my attention. Stay up with me, he said as he tugged at my pajama sleeve. I'll show you. He's real. We'll catch him in the act. I bet we'll be the first ones to have ever done it. And I'm sure he'll give us all kinds of stuff when we do. I sighed. I'd rather just get some sleep, Chris, I told him. You can go on believing if you want, but I don't have to just to have a good Christmas. I always tried to avoid being such a damper on his spirit, and I thought convincing him to forget his harebrained schemes would be better than waiting up half the night just to see his disappointment. Fucking bitch. Oh, come on, sis! He cried. Do you always have to make fun? Do I always have to make fun? No. <laughs> Do I always have to make you have fun? Do I always have to have... <laughs> okay. Do I always have to make love with you? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Do I always have to make love in you? <laughs> Wait, that reminds me. I haven't done it yet. Storm's coming, Annie. <laughs> come in me quick. I, I hate you so much. Do I always have to make you have fun? If it weren't for me, you turn into a boring old lady just like Miss Henderson. I must have made a disgusted face because Chris laughed, gave a mischievous grin, and said... Well, what's it gonna be, Miss Henderson? Are we gonna catch Santa in the act, or n <laughs> or not? 
Mrs. Henderson was my fourth grade teacher, and I despised that old crone with a Bitch. passion. Chris knew how to push my buttons. I know how to push your buttons, sis. All right, short stuff, you're on, I said with more bravado than I actually felt. First, to fall asleep, has to wait till next year to open their gifts from Santa. Chris's eyes flashed with excitement at the wager. I'll take that bet! So we went to our rooms to wait for our parents' turn to go to bed. After the lights downstairs went out, I waited about a half hour just to make sure they were asleep, and I crept out of my bed and sneaked my way downstairs. I saw that there was a light on in the living room. Chris was sitting casually near the fireplace. What took you so long? He asked. <laughs> Always the confident one. I waited for mom and dad to get to sleep, idiot, I replied. They're not going to be too happy if they find us here. With an unceremonious mm. plop, I sat down on the couch directly in front of the fireplace. So, how do you expect to stay up the entire night, I asked. I imagine I'll figure it out, Chris said. I'm not sure how long we waited there for the so-called Saint Nick to appear, but Chris looked almost ready to doze off when we were shocked awake by something that must have been large and heavy hitting the roof. After a short pause, there was a sound of shuffling and the scraping of feet. I was sure I heard the ringing of little bells. Oh, man! Chris whispered in awe. It's really him! For a moment, I wondered why Mom and Dad weren't awoken by any of this. All this racket was enough to wake the dead. But that train of thought stopped when the chimney soot started sprinkling down into the fireplace. Chris dashed over to me and shook my shoulders. What did I tell you? He's real! He's real! Unlike Chris... I didn't think there was any supernatural explanation behind the strange occurrence. I was convinced it was a burglar finding their way in through unconventional means. I sat stiffly staring at the fireplace for a few moments, unsure of what to do, until I rose and dived underneath the couch to hide. They just hear like, Oh, fuck, shit, fuck, 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 What are you doing? Chris, He's coming. Chris shit. cried in bewilderment. <laughs> better come to me quick. Get down! I whispered fiercely at him. We don't know who that really is. Chris opened his mouth to protest, but a voice let out a grunt from the chimney, and it spooked him enough to find a spot of his own. He hid behind Dad's large leather lounge chair in the corner. A few moments later, a final loud thump came, and the front of our fireplace was obscured by all the soot rushing out into the air. I covered my mouth and nose, trying desperately to prevent myself from coughing. And when it finally settled, the slight gave my cynical mind a serious shock. The old man that stood before me really was someone dressed as Santa Claus, and he looked every inch the part. His body was the perfect size, he had a long white beard, and his outfit was a beautifully made red jacket and pants. His face contained the soft, loving features of an old man enjoying the moment. What surprised me the most about the strange man was, even though he had just entered through our musty chimney, there wasn't a single speck of soot on him. It was almost as if anything that could mar his perfect appearance was naturally repelled. I was finally convinced he was the real deal by what came next. Throwing his sack of presents over his shoulder, Santa stepped away from the fireplace and a short elf girl emerged to follow him. The elf had pointed ears a glistening green suit, and was so short she only came up to Santa's knee. Unlike the jolly old man, she seemed terrified to take a single step into our home. She looked around as if there was some terrible threat in the room, and seemed only slightly relieved when she mistakenly thought it was empty. Santa noticed her fear, but rather than reassure her as would be expected, for a fraction of a second his face changed into a look of pure, horrifying malice. It was like the kind old man had been replaced by an insane, merciless master, only re to return a nanosecond later. The elf's mood changed on a dime. In short order, she was filling our stockings with small toys and candy, with a smile plastered onto her face that seemed ready to crack at any moment. Being so short, she had to use some kind of magic to levitate so she could get within reach. With purposeful, yet quiet footsteps, Santa made his way to our tree. Taking two presents from his bag, he placed them into a proper spot and went to where he had left his 
where we had left his traditional snack. The elf was done with her job too, but Santa wasn't inclined to share with his companion. Now that she was towing the line, he barely even acknowledged her presence. She stood just there next to him, waiting for him to finish, wringing her hands in nervous movements. On its face, this whole scene like something ripped straight from a Christmas television special, but even at my young age, I could tell that something more was going on. What I'm trying to say is it seemed like they were attempting to appear whimsical for whimsy's sake, like it was all one big act they were putting on. The little elf barely passed as a convincing actress, and Santa's momentary lapse only cemented my suspicions. It was something I was unable to articulate fully at the time, but I can now. It looked like a ruse. Chris fell for it right away. He must have been too young to notice the sinister signs that I had been able to pick up on. From my angle on the floor, I could see him clearly in his own hiding spot. The look on his face told me everything I needed to know. He was completely enamored with these two people, and to my horror, he slowly crept out from behind the chair. I wanted to call out to him, to tell him to stay right where he was, that these two were strangers, that there was no way to tell them what would happen once we knew, once they knew we were there, but that would have given us both away. It's not like he would have listened to me either. How many kids out there can't help but trust Santa Claus? Wow. He whispered to our bizarre intruders. It's, it's really you. At this, both Santa and his elf turned to find Chris standing in the middle of the room. Both had this faux expression of surprise that only served to unsettle me further. Waiting up for us, I see. Santa commented with a warm smile. Yeah. Chris said cheerfully. I wanted to prove that you were really real and everything. <laughs> and it seems you have. Santa replied with a chuckle. He sat down in my father's chair and motioned to Chris to sit with him, to which he obliged. <sighs> Oh, man, I got so many questions. Chris exclaimed. Are the reindeer on the roof? Can I see them? What is it like living in the North Pole? Oh, I wish I could see someday. Mm, all in good time. Santa said, grinning at his remark. Maybe to some it would have looked like a friendly expression, but to me it was a smile that seemed to contain the self-satisfaction of a winning game. As for the elf, she had lost all the color in her face. She made no move whatsoever as the two sat together, and her expression was enough to tell me that something horrible was about to happen. I knew you were real. I just knew it. Chris said. And all the big kids at school give us such a hard time about it. Even Sis was losing it too, just waiting till everyone hears about this. They won't, Chris. <laughs> Santa said, clasping his gloved hand over my brother's shoulder. Huh? Wh why not? He asked, confused. Do I have to keep it a secret? Santa laughed a deep, evil laugh that was too much unlike his fabled <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Do you honestly think that you've been the only one to ever see me? <laughs> that throughout history, the many little children of the world <laughs> haven't done the same as you? <laughs> Chris shifted uncomfortably in the man's lap. I, I guess not. You see, Chris, Santa began. Children are not to be trusted. They're ignorant, greedy, and selfish offspring of humans. A greedy and selfish race to begin with. Mm. Over the years, I've, I've been able to sustain myself on these human qualities, yes. And humans have happily whitewashed my persona in order to satiate their desires without guilt. <laughs> it's the perfect season for it. Don't you agree, my dear boy? The excitement in Chris's face was all but gone now. He was finally starting to get it. The children who seek me out always want something, Santa said. More meaningless possessions, satisfaction of curiosity, or simple proof are only a few examples. However, there is always a price to be paid for breaking the rules and finding something that is not meant to be found. Sandy, your lap's getting hard. Throughout the conversation, <laughs> the elf began to gather the gifts they had brought with a hint of reluctance. She even managed to make the cookies Santa ate magically reappear. She was ridding the house of any evidence of their presence. Santa's hand squeezed Chris's shoulder tightly. Uh. I'm always looking for more helpers, he continued. 
Children who have seen me who could never keep such a secret are the perfect candidates. My brother's face turned to an expression of absolute fear. He now realized his fatal error. You are not the first, he said. <laughs> you certainly won't be the last. Turning to his elf, Santa barked out a command. Yeah, Annabelle, it's time. Change him now. No, please, I... The elf stammered. Please don't make me... Santa gave her a cruel look of disdain and waved his hand towards her in an odd way. I was horrified to see the elf suddenly start clawing frantically at her face, digging her nails into her own skin. She screeched in pain, unable to stop harming herself, and Santa waved his hand again, releasing her from her torture. Her face was now covered in scratches, dripping with blood. Chris screamed and dove off Santa's <laughs> lap, trying to rush out of the room. But the old man made another strange wave with his hand, and Chris stopped in his tracks. As if possessed, my brother turned around to face him, his eyes wide with fear. He was under the man's, the awful man's control. Don't you see? It's too late for you now. He said triumphantly. Accept your fate. With a smug grin, Santa looked to his companion. I should really start having you wear all red. He said in a mocking tone. <laughs> At least then, the blood wouldn't show so much. Are you going to do as you're told now, Annabelle? Or do I have to think of something worse for you? The elf let out a heavy sob and looked up to my terrified brother. I'm sorry, she said in a sad, high-pitched voice. From where I was, I could see her tears mingling with blood as she took us, little silver wand hidden in the folds of her clothes. She pointed it directly at my brother, and a blinding flash filled the room. It took some time for my sight to recover, but when it did, I saw that Chris I knew disappear before me. His whole body looked like it was melting before my eyes, unnecessary flesh falling away and reshaping itself. And when the transformation was over, he was shorter, squatter. His ears came out to sharp points. His nose was round and flush as if it had been out in the cold. Even his clothes had changed to a uniform similar to Santa's companion, only red this time. His new elf appearance was a caricature of his former self. He must have been so scared, looking down at his new form, he could only let out a pitiful squeak. So was I, as I lay frozen underneath the couch, clutching the carpet, as that awful obese man and strange crying elf dragged my newly turned brother into our fireplace. Chris looked down and stared directly at me, his expression a desperate cry for help. But what could I do? How could I fight off two magical beings without getting myself into the same horrible situation? So I did nothing. I still have nightmares about that. With Chris in tow, they shot up the chimney altogether through their strange magic, and that was the last I ever saw of my little brother. For almost the entire night, I stayed under the couch, softly crying. In my state of shock, I had no strength to do much else. But as I saw the sun slowly rise from the windows, I knew it was safe to crawl out of my hiding place and find my way back to my room. The rest, I guess, is history. To this day, I won't have anything to do with this terrible holiday. I don't decorate. I don't give out gifts. I don't go to parties. I won't even live in a house with a chimney or a fireplace. Hell, I even refuse to visit houses with one this time of year. Don't even get me started about the mall or street corner Santas. I just keep my apartment. I keep to my apartment as much as I can. In my paranoia, I really just turn into a cheerless shut-in in a month out of the year because I know that somewhere in the world there will be more unlucky children going missing. I still don't know why I didn't meet the same fate as my brother. Has he never told his captors that I was there too? Could he really keep a secret for that long? Could they somehow pry the truth out of him? Every year since that night, I've been terrified that they'll finally come for me. Perhaps what keeps me safe is the fact that I've stayed quiet all these years, never telling anyone what really happened. I can only assume that Chris has done the same. Anyone out there must be wondering why I'd say anything about it now, and to be honest, I want to because I'm not sure what that fat bastard could do to me. 
I mean, there's no way he could turn a fully grown adult into an elf, right? But most of all, I want to know what's become of Chris. It hurts to think what could have happened to him over all these years, and I need to find out. Maybe if I share my story with the world, somebody out there will give me some answers. Maybe there's some way I can help him. I'm willing to take the risk. I just hope all the disturbing possibilities I've imagined won't come to pass. Christmas Eve is coming. Wish me luck. Ba-da-da! I hope Chris is suffering. Anally. Anally? Kyle wants to... <laughs> I hope session. Chris is suffering annually. That's fair. <clears throat> you fucking elf bitch! Get over here and do your job! Before I stick me fist up your green minge! Annabelle and that fucking tight snatch on her, too. <laughs> I know, man, right? God damn tight it! Elf snatch. Fucking green meatloaf. Alright, like well, green pot you know. Roast. That was a that was certainly a Christmas episode, was it not? Was yeah. it was it not? Yeah. It was my, oh my Frowns, what was your favorite of the fucking stories we just read? None of them. That's a because good I, That's had, fa- I had I had I had fair answer, I, all right. I had no ten, representation ten for Ron. me in my Jewish uh, ways. Ron, which one did you like the most? Probably that one. Christmas warning. Yeah. With creepy Santa Claus. Yeah, that, that was my favorite one. Taking your scene. child. Yeah. See, I liked the first one the most because it was one page long and it was that's about. Why, that's why you liked it. Santa Claus dying. It's about a father dying in a chimney. <laughs> yeah. We've all heard that before. Mhm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I like the last one a lot too. Something something about that, like creepy jovial santa claus just like keeping up the gimmick the entire time even when he's like oh you're coming with me now (laughs) indentured servitude like just like laughing and leaving presents in his wake yeah Uh, there's something very commotion commercially like fucked up about that well that's christianity for you in a nutshell thank you thank you i love christianity oh my god yeah right you can fuck right off with that get out of here so um, I'm not scared of you anymore. <laughs> so that was, so that was a uh, that was a Christmas episode with jingle uh, jingle jingle with yo ho frowns, <laughs> frowns McBoohoo <laughs> and Tenron Otrin. Uh, is there any more Christmas bullshit you want to say before I close yeah. out the episode? I Fra- say frowns frowns first. I thought you would close with him since this is his. Frowns first because I I want to listen to him less. Okay. <laughs> Why is it that you always want to listen to the Jews? And and Tenron. Honestly, to piggyback off of that, (laughs) fuck the Davidic line. This is great. The next time I go to the GOG, I'm going to talk about you nonstop. You're a fucking Meshuggah nut. Just get away from me. I don't want to see it. I don't want to hear it. Like no apologies, fuck the Davidic line. Merry, I don't I Merry don't wanna Christmas. hear And if you're vegetarian, candy cane pasta. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. For and, uh, all the things that <laughs> we've got in an Until we stand at the shore.